There may have been record highs this year for some of Wall Street's benchmarks, and we've seen big recoveries from the COVID lows here on this side of the Atlantic as well. But it's been a tough time for those companies wanting to come to the market in initial public offerings or IPOs. Chris Beecham, IG's chief market analyst, joins us now with some more analysis. Chris, welcome. Um, Describe where we are um, in the IPO market at the moment as we head into the last quarter of the year. I think we've seen a possible recovery uh, in IPO activity. Um, you've had a couple of key names coming to market. Uh, that has sort of shown you that there is appetite for IPOs. Um, Snowflake being the key one, of course, most recently with a, a big pop on the day for its shares. Um, you've also had Airbnb, that big IPO that's been so long expected, coming towards market, although it's not actually um, begun trading yet. In fact, it's only just really started the listing process. But I think it's a sign that where we are is a recovery of sorts from uh, the empty flat market for IPOs back in February and March, of course. And I think that's that's a good sign for market sentiment more generally. Um, and it is encouraging for those companies looking to, to list their shares and allow them to become publicly traded that you do have an, a market that's more willing to admit these kind of um, companies and investors that are willing to take on uh, that risk from um, putting their money to work in these newly listed companies. So, so what was it early in the year that to caused the headwind to the degree that people didn't really want to bring their company to market? You, you illustrate a little bit of the uh, frailties of the market early in the year, but what was it specifically that people were looking at that it's made them decide that it wasn't the right time? Well, I think a market sell-off such as we saw in February and March and has finished off at the beginning of April, I think really is, is never going to be a propitious time to launch an IPO. You want to, to be able to, to get your company away uh, in a period of rising share prices overall, particularly, of course, in your home market. And a lot of these big IPOs have listed in the US um, at a time such as we saw in February, March, when investors were in full risk off mode and moving money as fast as they could out of stocks. There was very little appetite to put money to work in these IPOs. Um, and for companies looking to list, of course, there's no real desire to, to list in this kind of market. You want really, although I suppose you could argue it's not important for the overall health of the company. But if you do list a company, you'd like to see the shares go up at least a little bit on the first day of trading to show a that you didn't sort of overprice the offering and, and that b investors are willing to put money in these companies if you try and list in a market that is in free fall as it was really at some points in february and march then you will i think see a very poor reaction so it has could have deterred companies and also the economic outlook was much darker in february and march it's a it's brighter now, although no, nowhere near as bright as it was a year ago, but it was very, very dark in March. You didn't know how far this pandemic would go, what kind of economic impact there would be. And you didn't know really at that point that the size and um, scale of the central bank and government stimulus that you did get that has helped to stabilise things so much over the past six months. So that's why I think we saw activity dry up in quite a sort of dramatic fashion. And it's taken obviously the next few months for for companies to just begin to put their head back above the parapet and think about listing their shares uh, and moving back towards engaging with the IPO process. Well, let, let's take a look at some of the high profile ones. I think you mentioned uh, Airbnb, which intends to come to the market. And indeed, we'll talk about that in the context of IG's grey market with uh, ByteDance as well in just a moment's time. But Snowflake coming to the market, a tremendous success, a massive upside. But I think uh, for me, certainly the uh, uh, the big point of this year is the fact whilst there have been successes and indeed we're also hearing uh, Jack Maher as well, possibly coming to the market with Ant Group, another one of his potential successes following on from his uh, big success a couple of years ago with uh, with Alibaba. Um, just want to talk about some of these really big successes and why they were successes given the headwinds in the market. Well, I think a lot of these ones that have been successful have been because they fall into the right kind of category for the market at this point in time. They are growth companies, high growth companies, um, obviously with the uh, connection to the internet, to cloud computing, uh, particularly in the case of Snowflake, uh, and can show this kind of compelling growth, which is what the market has been very keen to buy into over the past six months. Now, um, from sort of April onwards, we saw how stock markets rallied mainly through the efforts of these heavily weighted high growth mega cap tech firms, Apple, Amazon, Google and the like, who could point towards not just a solid business model in the lockdown, but also the prospect of future high growth returns. And the IPOs that 
have come into market in this kind of environment have been just that kind of firm. They are tech companies. They are companies that are not just showing a decent record so far, but can point towards further growth. If you look at Snowflake, of course, cloud computing, data processing, yes, it has big rivals in the shape of Amazon and Microsoft that aren't to be underestimated, but it can replicate a lot of that success, continue to expand. And in a world where income is so hard to come by, growth is a compelling story and investors reason that if you can't get the income, at least you'll get the capital growth in your investment. And that's why the, the companies that have come to market have all had this sort of tech attribute, or at least the ones that have really captured the headlines. Okay, let's pick up on that point now about uh, some of those stocks that are due to come to the market and IPOs. You mentioned uh, Airbnb. There's also ByteDance as well. Uh, and both of these um, have uh, grey market activity on the IG platform. What's the grey market looking like at the moment in terms of appetite? Well, we have seen quite healthy demand for both of these, really. ByteDance, um, our grain market went back actually as far as December 2019, when it was still expected to, to list um, or go for a listing. And the recent controversy, the news, as you highlight around TikTok, has, has actually made it quite a bit more uh, popular. And as we see with IPOs, a lot of the initial business is, is mainly people um, going long and starting to, to expect a higher valuation in the grey market for the first day of trading. And then as time goes on, usually more selling, more two-way business uh, comes in. And that's quite interesting to see that in terms of activity. Um, it hasn't obviously been quite as popular as, as Facebook and the Royal Mail IPOs of, of the distant past, but they do represent uh, an interesting uh, way of trading uh, market sentiment more broadly and of course these companies uh, specifically. So um, if we look at, for example, with ByteDance, it has uh, seen a steady increase in activity uh, amongst uh, IG clients with, um, I think the, the price moving with uh, risk appetite broadly in the market as the tech uh, index, the NASDAQ begin to top out in September, you have seen the price of that drop back again as well on the grey market, the, the, the actual ByteDance price. In terms of Airbnb, this is a much newer grey market, so it hasn't quite reached the level of activity, but it is uh, still quite an interesting market. And again, it is seeing that kind of sort of two-way activity uh, with people buying and selling the grey market and expectation that perhaps um, the, the average sort of market cap is beginning to emerge at around a sort of 40, 45 billion level. So I think these are quite interesting markets to watch as we head into the final quarter of the year uh, and either they come closer to IPO or as market volatility picks up ahead of the US election. Well, well let's look at the last quarter of the year now. You, you mentioned the fact that IPOs are a, a, a gauge of uh, market sentiment. Uh, what's it looking like for the fourth quarter of this year in terms of those companies that may want to come to the market? Well, I think if we'd had this conversation a couple of weeks ago, maybe then things would look fairly sunny. Yes, there were still concerns about rising cases um, and economic growth. But overall, I think markets were a much more optimistic frame of mind. Now, as we head into the final quarter of the year, people are becoming more pessimistic again. The UK has had a reimposition of restrictions, although not full lockdown. Spain is widening its lockdown in Madrid and its surrounding areas. And of course, US virus cases continue to rise as well. Um, and the economic outlook, I think, begins to darken, not least because of the big central bank and government stimulus efforts have sort of faded from memory for the time being. We do expect another big stimulus effort from the US, but not before the election. I think that's the problem for markets, that they got used to this stimulus activity to help the market, to help provide liquidity. And without that, you're just beginning to see risk appetite wane. And that's a problem, I think, for IPOs heading into the final quarter of the year, that people want to see a, a a rising market and appetite a market where risk appetite is rewarded uh, and that's I think going to be the major issue that for the time being people are a lot more cautious than they were in June and July and August and that could be a, a sustained issue for the next few weeks at least and until perhaps for starters the US election is out of the way and we know what the result of that is. Okay, Chris. All right. We'll leave it there. But thanks indeed for joining us. We'll look at uh, initial public offerings uh, throughout this year and as we head into that last uh, three months of 2020. That's Chris Beecham, his Chief Market Analyst at IG. For more videos from us here at IGTV, join us on Twitter at IGTV and subscribe to our YouTube channel.